For General Electric, here is Ronald Reagan. Good evening. We are pleased to present James Dean and Natalie Wood in a repeat performance of Sherwood Anderson's I'm a Fool, starring Eddie Albert as the narrator on the General Electric Theater. In research, in engineering, in manufacturing skill, in the values that bring a better, more satisfying life at General Electric. Progress is our most important product. In a moment, in answer to a great many requests, we'll present a film of a fine performance by James Dean in a General Electric Theater play. It was a performance that helped attract nationwide attention to his talent, and we present it as one of the landmarks in his progress toward the great roles of his brief career. Those of us who worked with Jimmy Dean carry an image of his intense struggle for a goal beyond himself. And curiously enough, that's the story of the boy he portrays tonight. Eddie Albert is the narrator, Natalie Wood the girl, in Sherwood Anderson's I'm a Fool. It was a hard joke for me, one of the most bitterest I ever had to face. And it, and it came about to my own foolishness, too. Even now, when I... Let's see, what am I? Twenty years older. Yeah, and still hanging around racetracks and horses. Well, never mind about that. Anyway, what are they saying? Even now, when I think about it, I, I want to cry or swear or kick myself. It all started one day in July. There I was, 19 years old, too big to hang around the house, and there was no job in town I could get. So I made up my mind to try for a bigger town. I knew if I was ever going to amount to anything, I just had to get out of there. There was almost to it. Well, my sister Mildred, she stormed and scolded all that week before I left. My mother cried. I don't know why you can't stay here where everybody knows you. Oh, please. If your father was alive... Oh, Ma, don't cry. I'm not, I'm not crying. Mildred, make her stop crying. You better eat now, you hear? Yeah, I'm okay. You have to have a hot meal every single day. And you better write, too. Okay, Ma, will. Better write me every single day what you have to eat. I will. You promise. Oh, Ma. I promise. He won't write. I will, so. Ma, I'll write you every single day. Honest, I will. Well, this is it. <laughs> and remember one thing. Yes, Ma. Clothes make the man. Put up a good front. The world is yours. Oh, Ma, I'm going to remember that. I really am. Well, oh, bye, Ma. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, Mildred. Oh, wait a minute. Y you better take this. But be careful how you spend it. Well, I don't think I'm going to need it, Mildred, honestly. Well, I, I don't want to have to worry all night if you got something to eat. Son. Yeah. Just promise me one thing. Just promise me you won't get mixed up in no way with no sneaky people. Oh, Ma. Ma, no, I will. <laughs> I promised, didn't I? I gotta go, it's getting dark. Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye, sir. There are a lot of things you gotta promise your mother when you go away. And a lot of things you gotta keep from telling her, too, like... I knew if I told her where I was going, she'd worry from now till next Christmas, maybe even longer. Because I knew the first place I was going to go to the minute I got to Sandusky was to the racetrack. You know about it and go fooling around here? I didn't do nothing. I was just, I was just walking. That's, that's a good way to get yourself shot, boy. I just got in town. I was looking for work. I thought maybe I could this find. This time of night. I, I just got off the train there. Well, you better get out of here. I can tell you that right now. I didn't mean nothing. Honest, I didn't. I just, I just wondered maybe if I could, I might. Get All out. right. What kind of work you looking for? I want to be a swipe. You know anything about horses? Oh, sure. What? Oh, well, they, uh, 
Sometimes, well, <laughs> I don't know. They... How do you expect to get yourself a job around horses if you don't know nothing about them? Well, I guess I don't know too much about them, but, uh, well, well I like horses. In fact, I, I, I really love them. And I just figured if I could get some work, I thought, then I could learn. I could learn right offhand. I could... Well, what I, what I thought was that um, maybe you could help me. Maybe you could tell me where I could find some. Yeah, you don't look none too strong, and that's the truth. You can't be too bright or you'd never want to be a swipe in the first place. Now, tell me, you uh, know what a swipe does? He just uh, uh, cleans things up and, uh, well, just helps around and all that sort of thing, I guess. Guess you don't even have a place to sleep tonight, do you? Well, I, see, I figured that I'd just, uh, you know... <laughs> kind of what? Oh, uh, do you know I can just sleep uh, just about any place? I can. <laughs> I don't even care. Now, I was going to sleep in them grandstands over there. On them hard boards? Why, well, you're the craziest boy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> now, look at that. All this talking's got a nervous... I told you, you've got to keep it quiet around horses, boy. They got nerves like a young girl. Didn't I tell you that? Well, yeah. Well, no. Well, no, you didn't tell me nothing. Well, I should have gone. Go on in there and get some sleep on that. Hey, I got to tell you everything. Now, we get up early in the morning around here, and I don't want to have nobody poking around all day with his eyes half closed. Well, go on, boy, if you're going. Uh, thanks. Thanks an awful lot. Hey, boy. Yes, sir. You can call me Bert. You know, sometimes I think that boys who was brought up regular, you know, at houses, and never had a fine friend like Bert, well, they go to high schools and colleges, that's true, but, but they've never come walking down in front of a grandstand, you know what I mean? Oh, what's the use of talking? Such fellas just don't know nothing at all. Well, of course, they had no opportunity. I did. Old Bert got me a job and everything. I guess you kind of like me. I don't know why. But, well, never mind that. Anyway, I had this job. And that was fine. And uh, I spent all my spare time with Bert. And he taught me lots of things. But the best of all was the times that Bert and me would hitch up a horse to a cart. You know, and we'd go riding out in the country slow and steady like, oh, that was fun. Fun. Just, just riding along and singing, you know. But one day... I guess it was October. We was riding along like we always did, and I seen this girl. I guess that was about the beginning of my downfall. <laughs> yeah, here, let me see the ketchup. Oh, 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 yeah. That's right, the ketchup. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you haven't ruined your trousers. No, you couldn't ruin them. They're too old. <laughs> oh, oh, well, here's something. No. Well, I better get on back. Because uh, uh, if I don't, I'll have to, to walk back to town. Thank you again. You're going to break your fool neck. Oh, my darling, that'll be great. <laughs> what? What What'd you say? What kind of way is that to ride a cart? You're riding, sit up and ride right. You're going to stare your eyes out, get off the cart and stare. I bet they're just about my age, too. Fancy clothes are playing ball in, for heaven's sake. Keep it up, boy. You're just asking for trouble. <laughs> I bet that's kind of go to college and all. Hmm. Sure don't seem stuck on themselves, though. You know that? Yeah, I've seen many a boy get himself burned on that candle. Gets around a racetrack, wins us up a dollar or two, and first thing you know, he's trying to be two or three other things. You better learn this, boy. You are what you are, and they are what they are. <laughs> the look on your face when you've seen that girl. <laughs> you should have seen it, boy. <laughs> Bert. 
don't want you to call me boy no more. Oh, Bert was right. I knew he was right as soon as he said it, but I wouldn't listen to him. <laughs> Not me. I want to get a new job now. Some fancy clothes and... Oh. Oh, uh, what's the use of talking? I was about to do the biggest dumb fool thing in my whole life. Got me a new job, all right, taking care of some horses for a man who owned a teaming and delivery business here, and I saved my money, and I bought myself a new brown derby hat and a stand-up poly. Well, I always say, put up a good front, and the world is yours, you know? Anyhow, one day, I had about... Forty dollars in my pocket. I went into the West House. That's this big hotel where all the dudes was. Uh, give me about uh, three of them twenty-five cent cigars. Oh. <laughs> There's always a lot of horsemen and strangers and uh, dressed-up people from out of town, you know, hanging around the lobby in a barn. So I mingled amongst them. But there was this, this dude. He had a cane and he had a Windsor tie. Oh, it made me sick to look at it. Oh, I like a man to be a man, you know, and dress up, but not to put on such airs. Well, anyhow, I pushed him aside, a little rough, so he know who I was, you know. a drink of whiskey. Well, yes, sir. I had $40 in my pocket. I just says to myself, well, I'll go down to the track. See how old Bert's coming along. Because I hadn't seen him for since the day of that ride. You really want to know the truth. Hi, Bert. Hello. How you been? Fine. Gee, I haven't seen you in a mm, long time. You look good. <laughs> Hey, is that old Bob French over there? Yeah, I guess so. Is he running the horse today? Mm-hmm. Think he's out to win? Hard to say. Uh, you know, when I was, uh, swiping a horse, I didn't, uh, care much for that, but... Huh, now, I, I'd like to know I had a horse that had a lot of speed, and boy, he could just get out there when you wanted him to. You a betting man now? Ah, uh, nah. I, you know, just for fun. <laughs> that horse is owned by Mr. Mathers down at Marietta, Ohio. Mr. Mathers? Mm -hmm. I know him, yeah. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> He's got all that money. Owns that big swell place up in, uh, down there in the middle of town. <laughs> is that the one? Well, you didn't forget everything. <laughs> well, no. Bert, I didn't forget nothing. It's just that I... Well, you know... You want one? I ain't mad at you or nothing, Bert. Yeah, well, you just put some money on this horse. Now you're a betting man. The name is about Ben Ahem. Bob French is going to win it today. Yeah. Now, don't bet a cent on this first heat, because you'll go like an oxen hitched to a plow. <laughs> but uh, when the first heat's over, you just go right down and lay on your pile. <laughs> Bert, you're not going to be mad at me, are you? Mad? Yeah. I'm not mad. I wish you luck. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <coughs> uh, this is Miss Eleanor Woodbury, my best friend, and my brother Wilbur. This is... Yeah. I'm sorry, but I don't seem to... Well, uh, 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 Mathers. Yeah, uh, Waller Mathers. I'm from Marietta, Ohio. Oh, you're from out of town, too. Yeah. So are we. We just came down for the day to visit Miss Woodbury. Oh, won't you join us, Mr. Mathers? Oh, we have a box in the grandstand. Uh, uh, well, I usually watch the races right from here. See, I told you. People who know what they're doing never go near the grandstands. Here's where you get all the inside information. Isn't that right, Mr... 
Mathers. Uh, Walter Mathers. Do you have a lot of inside information, Mr. Mathers? <coughs> well, I guess I guess you would say a lot of information. Yeah. I'm afraid we don't have any information. In fact, none of us have ever been to the track before. Well, in this next race, uh, there's this horse. Uh, been uh, about been a him. He's a... Uh, well, if I were you folks, I wouldn't put a sin on him in this first heat because he's probably going to run like a oxen hitched to a plow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, after this heat's over, though, I'd get right down there and I'd uh, lay on my pile. I don't know what come over me. I guess it was their swell names and everything got me off my trolley, but I couldn't make her out for a boob, could I? Anyway, first thing I knew, I, I was telling all three of them the smashingest lie you ever heard. My father owns that horse. Hmm? Yes, sir. He just uh, lets them out to Bob French for racing purposes. See, uh, my family's proud, and uh, they never went into racing in this way with their own name. You know what I mean? And then I went the whole hog. I told them about our place down at Marietta and the big stables and the grand brick house up on the hill overlooking the Ohio River. Well, I, I knew enough not to do it in no bragging way, you understand. What I did was to, to start things off and then let them drag the rest of it out of me. Oh, I told them my father had suspected maybe this Bob French wasn't on the square, you understand, and... Uh, he had sent me down from Sandusky on the sly to find out what I could. Well, anyhow, uh, up come this first heat, and sure enough, this about Ben Ahem, he pulled up in a back stretch like he was a wooden horse or a sick one, anyhow, and he come in to be last. Well, do we bet now? Hey, w would you mind uh, running down and putting this on for me, too? I don't want to go down there, because uh, I figure I don't want Bob... Uh, French to see me. Oh, sure. I want to bet some of my money, too. Well, I wouldn't put on too much, because, uh, this Bob French, he's, uh, you know, I, boy, I wouldn't trust him too much. <laughs> well, if you're going to bet, Walter. Walter. That was a laugh. No, I really mean, what a boob I am. There, there ain't any such guy like Walter, named Walter Mathers, and there never was one. And if there was one, I'd go right down to Marietta tomorrow, and I'd shoot him, because that fool horse won. That just made things worse. Now this Wilbur is inviting me to dinner to, with them all in some little place they knew about by the railroad track with a beach around it and all. And sure enough, there I was, drinking champagne and all. Oh, but to tell you the truth, I don't think I could tell you a thing I ate. I mean, I just didn't taste nothing. And I don't think Lucy did either. We just sat there looking at each other. All I could think about was that train coming at 10 o'clock and it getting later and later and she having to be on it. And I, I, just, I just had to tell her the truth, who I was, before she got in that train. I just wanted to cry. You know, there's a girl, kind of a girl you meet just once in your life, and if you don't get busy and, and, and make some hay while well, you're done for once and for all, it's, you might as well jump off a bridge. Uh, they give you a kind of a look from the inside of them somewhere, and... No, no, it ain't vamping. But what it means is, you want this girl to be your wife, and you want nice things around her, like flowers and swell clothes and all, and you want her to have the kids you're gonna have, and, and you want good music played, and no ragtime. When it happens, it, it happens all of a sudden. You, you're just standing there, and you kind of turn to you, each other, both of you, and you're in love. Not her and Walter Mathers, because there ain't any such guy, but her and me. Me. And it ain't because of that lie that I told her about my father and all that, neither. I know. There's a way you can tell. But, gee, I just had to tell her who I really was before she got in a train. I mean, I had to. I wish I didn't have to go back. I wish that train would never come. Yeah. Honest. I mean it. I mean it too, Lucy. I don't know when I'll be coming back here. When I'll ever get to see you again. Well, Lucy, there's something that I've got to tell you. 
I wish that Thank train you. would break down in the middle of the tracks and stay there. A hundred years. I'll just miss it, that's what. Well, I'll pretend I didn't hear it come in. Well, it's not right for you to miss it. Uh, it might be right for some girls, but... Shh, not you, Lucy. Uh, oh, I guess Wilbur's watching out, so I can't miss it. Lucy. I gotta tell you something. Will you listen to me a minute? Don't talk. Well, I gotta tell Please you this don't story. Talk. Anybody can open his mouth and let words come out. Talk is so cheap. So awfully cheap. Well, I know that, but this is something that you can't. can't. It seems so smooth. Like. like we could get out in the middle of a lake and walk in the water. Doesn't seem like that to you. I'll always remember this place, the smooth water, the way the roots of old trees have washed up in the sand, the dark, you. Would you remember the watery smell? Mm -hmm. And the night? Mm -hmm. Like, like if you put out your hand, you could feel it, warm and, and soft and dark and, and sweet like an orange. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lucy. Lucy, I... I gotta tell you something. I mean, you're not gonna think maybe... Oh! Well, I gotta tell you now before... Oh, here comes Wilbur! Lucy! Yes, yes, I do. Oh, and I love you, Walter. I'll always love you. Well, Lucy, we're going to have to hurry. We'll have to run. Lucy, please, we have to run. Come on, hurry up. It won't be long because you're right. Then I'll write you. I don't know where to write, Lucy. I don't know where to write to. Well, I know where. I'll write. Walter Mathers, Marietta, Ohio. But Lucy, I'm not Walter Walter. I could have run after that train, sure. I'd have made Dan Patch look like a freight train after a wreck. But socks are mighty. Why should... Did you ever see such a fool? Well... How could I tell her? I got a chance like a hay barn fire, I have. And suppose she does write to me down there, Marietta, the letter's gonna come back. Stamped on the front of it there by the USA, that there ain't any such guy or whatever it is they stamp on the... Me trying to pass myself off as a big swell to her. As decent a person as God ever made. I'll bet you what. If I was to get an arm broke right now or to have a train run over my foot, I, I wouldn't call no doctor. I'd just sit here and let it hurt and hurt. That's what I'd do. I bet you what. If I hadn't seen that dude with that cane, I'd never been such a fool as to go and tell such a lie. It could never be made straight, you know, to a lady like her. Wish I had him here right now, that, that guy with the Windsor the cane. Man, I'd smash him for fair. He's a big fool, that's what he is. And if I'm not another, you just go find me one, and I'll, I'll give up working and, and be a bum and give him my job. Because I don't care nothing for working and earning and saving money for no such boob as myself.
just sleep uh, just about any place? I can. <laughs> I don't even care. Now, I was going to sleep in them grandstands over there. On them hard boards? Why, well, you're the craziest boy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> now, look at that. All this puffin's got a nervous... I told you, you got to keep it quiet around horses, boy. They got nerves like a young girl. Didn't I tell you that? Well, yeah. Well, no. Well, no, you didn't tell me nothing. Well, I should have. Go on. Go on in there and get some sleep on that. Hey, I got to tell you everything. Now, we get up early in the morning around here, and I don't want to have nobody poking around all day with his eyes half closed. Well, go on, boy, if you're going. Uh, thanks. Thanks an awful lot. Hey, boy. You can call me Bert. You know, sometimes I think that boys who was brought up regular, you know, at houses, and never had a fine friend like Bert, well, they go to high schools and colleges, that's true, but, but they've never come walking down in front of a grandstand, you know what I mean? Oh, what's the use of talking? Such fellas just don't know nothing at all. Well, of course, they had no opportunity. So I did. Old Bert got me a job and everything. I guess you kind of like me. I don't know why. I want to cry or swear or kick myself. It all started one day in July. There I was, 19 years old. Too big to hang around the house and there was no job in town I could get. So I made up my mind to try for a bigger town. I knew if I was ever going to amount to anything, I just had to get out of there. There was always to it. Well, my sister Mildred, she stormed and scolded all that week before I left. My mother cried. I don't know why you can't stay here where everybody knows you. Oh, please. If your father was alive... Mother, well, don't cry. I'm not, I'm not crying. Mildred, make her stop crying. You better eat now you're here. Yeah, I'm okay. You have to have a hot meal every single day. And you better write, too. Okay, Ma, will. Better write me every single day what yes. you have to eat. I will. You promise. Oh, Ma. I promise. He won't write. I will so. Ma, I'll write you every single day. Honest, I will. Well, this is it. <laughs> and remember one thing. Yes, Ma. Clothes make the man. Put up a good front. The world is yours. Oh, Ma. I'm going to remember that. I really am. Well... Oh. Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, Mildred. Wait a minute. Y you better take this. But be careful how you spend it. Well, I don't think I'm going to need it, Mildred, honestly. Well, I, I don't want to have to worry all night if you got something to eat. Son. Yeah. Just promise me one thing. Just promise me you won't get mixed up in no way with no sneaky people. Oh, Ma. Come on now, I will. <laughs> so I promised, didn't I? I gotta go, it's getting dark. Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye, sir. There are a lot of things you gotta promise your mother when you go away. And a lot of things you gotta keep from telling her, too, like... I knew if I told her where I was going, she'd worry from now till next Christmas, maybe even longer. Because I knew the first place I was going to go to the minute I got to Sandusky was to the racetrack. You know about it and go fooling around here? Well, I, I didn't do nothing. I was just. I, I... For General Electric, here is Ronald Reagan. Good evening. We are pleased to present James Dean and Natalie Wood in a repeat performance of Sherwood Anderson's I'm a Fool, starring Eddie Albert as the narrator on the General Electric Theater. In research, in engineering, in manufacturing skill. In the values that bring a better, more satisfying life at General Electric. Progress is our most important product. 
In a moment, in answer to a great many requests, we'll present a film of a fine performance by James Dean in a General Electric Theater play. It was a performance that helped attract nationwide attention to his talent, and we present it as one of the landmarks in his progress toward the great roles of his brief career. Those of us who worked with Jimmy Dean carry an image of his intense struggle for a goal beyond himself. And curiously enough, that's the story of the boy he portrays tonight. Eddie Albert is the narrator, Natalie Wood the girl, in Sherwood Anderson's I'm a Fool. It was a hard joke for me, one of the most bitterest I ever had to face. And it, and it came about to my own foolishness, too. Even now, when I... Let's see, what am I? Twenty years older. Yeah, and still hanging around racetracks and horses. Well, never mind about that. Anyway, what are they saying? Even now, when I think about it, I... Just walk in, that's, that's a good way to get yourself shot, boy. Well, I just got in town. I was looking for work. I thought maybe I could this find... This time something. of night... I, I just got off the train there. Well, you better get out of here. I can tell you that right now. I didn't mean nothing. Honest, I didn't. I just... I just wondered maybe if I could... I might... Get All out. right. What kind of work are you looking for? I want to be a swipe. You know anything about horses? Well, sure. What? Oh, well, they, uh... Sometimes, well, well, I don't know. They... <laughs> How do you expect to get yourself a job around horses if you don't know nothing about them? Well, I guess I don't know too much about them, but, uh, well, well I like horses. In fact, I, I, I really love them. And I just figured if I could get some work, I thought, then I could learn. I could learn right offhand that I could... Well, what I, what I thought was that... Um, Maybe you could help me. Maybe you could tell me where I could find some. Yeah, you don't look none too strong, and that's the truth. You can't be too bright or you'd never want to be a swipe in the first place. Now tell me, you uh, know what a swipe does? He just uh, uh, cleans things up and, uh, well, just helps around and all that sort of thing, I guess. Guess you don't even have a place to sleep tonight, do you? Well, I... See, I figured it. I just, uh, you know. <laughs> kind of what? Oh, uh, uh. Do you know? I